Some time ago, I've made a tutorial on how to paint trees. You guys loved it and asked me to make more. So today I will show you how to paint a tree using a loose watercolor technique. Hi, I'm Layla. Thank you for joining me in my studio. Here are the things that you might need for this tutorial watercolor brushes, a spray bottle with some water, granulating medium, masking tape, just your regular table salt, your favorite watercolor paint, jars of water, and last but not least, some nice watercolor paper. Now I'm just using a Fabriano cold pressed paper. Okay, first things first, we want to apply a masking tape onto the paper to reserve clean edges. You don't have to do this step, but you can if you'd like to. I think it's also important to show you my setup. So my piece of paper is sitting on a board which is prepped onto just a couple of little books up there. So it is creating a little bit of a slope, uh, which will make it easier to control the paint because you know gravity will be pulling it this way. So you can have at least a little bit of prediction which way the paint will travel. So to start with, I'm just going to sketch a very, very simple little sort of a scene. As you can see, I am not going into too much detail, just a couple of lines here and there. And here it is. It looks a little bit abstract and strange, but you don't really want to be drawing every single leaf because, as I said, this will be a very beautiful, very free-flowing technique. Now, I'm sure you have seen loose painting techniques where water is applied all over your watercolor piece of paper, but for this one, I'm just going to use this spray bottle. Rather than creating this one continuous film of water on the paper, this actually creates almost like a bubbly effect and you will see how it affects the way the paint runs. So I'm just going to spray it all over this area and you can see what I mean the water is not evenly applied and that will give you a very interesting effect now I'm going to create a mix of a little bit of Mars black just because it's such a highly granulating color and I love that effect with some cerulean blue which is a very realistic uh, rainy day sky kind of a blue and so now I'm going to apply this paint and rather than smudging it or trying to create that sort of a perfect gradient i'm dabbing the paint on like this and leaving some areas uh, in between for the paint to run and create these beautiful textures because remember we sprayed the water on that's the key to create this really lovely texture now to make this effect stronger you can lift your paper and remember to absorb all the extra paint that's dripping off your board. Now next step is applying that same mix but with a different proportion. Here I am using more of the Mars black and on this side we can do a smooth transition. Next step is getting a little bit of color that is called rutile yellow. Now, very similar, I'm going to apply just a little bit of it over here and over here. Again, I'm going to use the spray method rather than using a brush to apply moisture to the paper. For my next step, I am mixing cerulean blue with rutile yellow to create this really soft, almost green-like color. And because this area here is somewhat dry, well, at least there isn't a film of water on it, I'm going to mark the greenery. So here I have a tree with some bushes growing around the rocks. 
If you are enjoying this video, make sure to check out my Patreon page. You guys will have so much fun over there with my patrons. We do monthly giveaways, we do video suggestions, plus all the extra tutorials that are not available here on YouTube. If you become a patron, you'll be able to request videos, you'd be able to win artworks and so many more other fun things that we do over there. Make sure to head over and check it out. Link is under the video. Remember with watercolor, you always want to start with lighter color than you think you would need because it's always easier to add another layer of darker shade. So at the moment it looks kind of like a whole bunch of blobs of color flowing one into the other, but that's the idea. Now my next step, while this is still quite damp, is to add a darker, stronger shade of green. So here I have a little bit of Prussian blue with still the same Rutile yellow. So now you have to be quite careful and make sure that you are creating these darker areas where you really want them to go. So just blobbing a little bit of that on here and there and you see how it, it runs quite freely. Anywhere you feel that you need to add a little bit more intensity to your green and you apply this color. Okay, and now I want my paint to run upward, so I'm going to lift my paper vertically, but upside down. And you can see the gravity is doing its job. You see how the grass is actually forming without me having to do anything to it. I'm not touching it with the paintbrush, nothing, just holding it up like that. Now, while this paint is still wet and running, I'm going to use a little bit of granulation medium. For this, you can either use a brush and pick up some of this granulating medium with your brush, but I like to do it with a pipette. And here we go. Now, can you see the beauty that is being created? If you would like to know more on how to enhance or reduce granulation, I have a very, very in-depth video on that, which I will link under the video. And so many people that have watched it said that it's the best granulation video on YouTube. So you can go and check it out and tell me if you think so too or not. Okay, so while the granulating medium is still sitting there, I'm going to apply another layer of paint and this time it's Prussian blue with quinacridone burnt orange. But you can use um, a sort of a warmer brown if you'd like. So that creates a more intense, deeper green. And all I'm doing now is going into smaller areas of the green leafage of the tree. Now just a little bit of ochre and just adding a bit of that color through here on the ground area. Here is a mix of rutile yellow and quinacridone burnt orange and again I'm just adding a little bit of that warmth right into the front of the painting. Now those of you who watch a lot of my videos, you probably already know that warmer colors bring things a little bit closer to us and cooler colors push things away. Now here again I'm mixing in Prussian blue with the quinacridone burnt orange and creating even a deeper, richer mixture. And this time it's a little bit warmer, so it almost looks like a brownish sort of a green. Dabbing that color again and just letting it go. Remember, this is a loose tutorial. We are not outlining every single leaf like we did in the previous ones. Now next I'm mixing a tiny little bit of Mars Black into the previous mix that I was using. And I'm just going with a little bit more of the detail and that, that color granulates so beautifully. I love to include a little bit of it. I know a lot of people don't like using black in their watercolor, but it creates a really lovely effect. Now I'm going to use that same color to apply a little bit of the gray on the front here. 
just like that and again you don't want to control it you just let it run rocks in the front here just a little bit of the warmth just through the some because there'll be some sort of a bush growing on the side and just you know just just letting introducing these colors and letting them run now we need to leave that to dry okay now these are the beautiful textures that we have created and now this is dry for us to start working on the next layer i'm going to work on things like branches and some little grassy bits and also give a little bit more definition to the rocks at the front. For that I'm going to mix a little bit of quinacridone orange with a little bit of burnt umber and Prussian blue. And here we go. You want to make some branches softer and some branches a little bit more intense in color that will create a perception of some of them being further away and some a little bit closer. You might want to put some of the branches showing through the greenery. And remember, the further along the branches go, the wispier and softer they become. So now I'm going over some of the branches to really bring out the depth and move them a little bit closer, make them more eye-catching while leaving some just sitting there and relaxing on the background. You can always use different shade. So here I'm using a mix of blue with that mix of branches that I've used for that extra depth or almost shadow-like appearance. And some branches you can put a little bit of the warmer tint just to sort of a show a play of light on some of the branches. Even though it doesn't look like a very sunny day, you'll still have a bit of sun catching some of the branches. Now adding a little bit more detail here and there in the shape of little branches sticking out and also make sure that you are working while the paint is wet so that that color can travel through the branch pattern that you created. With most loose watercolors, at least I personally think that having one focal point that is actually done in quite a bit of contrast with quite a bit of precision it can be few dots in the center of the flower or in this instance it's branches of the tree you want them to be nice and crisp at least in some areas and what they do is they anchor all of those beautiful colors that are creating this chaos around this one focal point now going back to this sort of a brownie muddy yellowy color pretty much just mixed whatever i had on the palette and putting th few little strands you want the color to be quite washed out though this is a bit too strong remember watercolor dries even lighter so make sure you keep that in mind Now I'm again going for the mix that I've used for the beginning of the tree of Rutile Yellow and Cerulean Blue and with a very soft variation of it I'm just going to add a little bit of little lines and markings that can be reminiscent of you know grassy little bits and then I'm going to soften them because I don't want this to be overpowering. So just creating that light, zingy kind of a shade.
a little bit of scribbling on the foreground as well and now to define this greenery a little bit more as well and now let's work on the sort of this rock kind of a formation again we don't want to go too much into detail but you do want to apply a little bit of some shadows and give it just a little bit more definition I suppose Now here in the bushes I want to create a little bit of the texture that can be created by salt. Now if you do this on white paper the texture will be quite strong but since I'm doing it already on the painted surface the areas that will come through will be very mild. And now what we have to do is we need to wait for the salt to do its work. We do not want to play with this, move the salt around, touch it with brushes, add water, paint or anything like this because it will ruin the effect. So just leaving it to be as is is what we're going to need to do for now. While this is drying, I'm just going to add a little bit more of those sort of a grassy things on the side here because now all of this is dry as well Now what I'm going to do, again while this is drying, is I'm going to bring a little bit of the very contrasty, very bright color. So for that I'm going to use two colors that I haven't used through this artwork before. So these two colors are Henza Yellow Light and Cobalt Teal. Now the, now the mix that they create is a super zingy, almost like a you know canary kind of a yellow, greeny sort of a shade. And what I'm going to do is in a couple of places, almost like what happens when you've got a cloudy day, but you've got little spots between the clouds with the sun hitting some of the areas, you know, that sort of a feeling. This is what I want to create in this artwork. And just in a couple of places, just creating a couple of dashes of that color. And you see what it, what it does? It instantly lifts the colors up and creates a, almost a little bit of that happier sort of a feeling in the artwork. So you don't want this color to be overpowering or overwhelming anything. You just pretty much put in a couple of spots, dots and dashes here and there. And that would do the trick.
and as the salt is working let's do just a few more finishing touches on the rocks they're just a little bit too light for my liking and are taking up too much attention so i just want to push them back a little bit And again, we can add a little bit of salt for that salty texture. Okay, now it has been some time um, because it took a while to dry. And so now I can remove this salt. And I'm just mixing whatever colors I have on the palette and just again couple of remember how I was telling you about that anchor point so just a couple of little details which are quite sharp and not free-flowing and loose Okay, so I think we have definitely created this really cool, relaxing feel with the clouds, but also sun hitting some of the spots. Feels like a really nice summery day. So let's remove the masking tape and reveal the painting. Okay, here we go I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope um, you check out the patreon page where I've got more tutorials more techniques more fun like giveaways and so many other things so you guys make sure you check it out and I want to say a big big thank you to my wonderful wonderful patrons who are supporting this channel and helping me along with um, suggestions and um, products and all sorts of stuff so thank you guys very much don't forget to subscribe press notification bell to make sure that you're updated with all the videos and i hope to see you soon in the next video bye bye